For a couple years now, if you wanted to get into 3D scanning and particular into the Shining 3D range, the Einstar was your entry point and the Einstar has done a great job for the past three years. In fact, we've still got ours over here. We still use it somewhat regularly and we still recommend it to many, many users. But today, Shining 3D released the Einstar 2 and the Einstar Rocket. So let's see how they differ from the original Einstar, differ from each other and how they stack up against it. Okay, so first things first, one just looks blue, one looks black. Apart from that, the rest of the box is pretty similar. But the important bit about all of this is what sits in these two boxes, and these are the batteries. The Einstar 2 and the Rocket are both completely wireless scanners with the ability to be tethered to a computer if you want to. On top of that, we've got some cables. I've already taken this one out, but we've got some Type-C cables, which interfaces to the scanners. They're both Type-C, so no more of the proprietary connection that was found on the original Einstar. We have holders here, which are for the calibration boards, but also rests for the scanners themselves. And beneath that, we have the battery charger so that is for the removable batteries so that you can plug it in while still scanning you don't actually have to physically charge the battery within the scanner which is quite handy then the actual scanners themselves both look very similar obviously like i said the einstar 2 is blue and the rocket is black but on the front of the scanners is where it gets a little bit different on the front of the rocket you can see we've got two laser emitters at an angle that creates our crosshatch pattern which is 19 plus 19 laser lines plus an extra seven line parallel mode for detailed scanning. Whereas on the Einstar 2, we've only got one parallel scanning mode, which means that we don't have the cross hatched function and the versatility between the two. This also allows the rocket to do marker-free laser scanning. So that is ultimately the major difference between these two scanners. So we're gonna have to give that a shot, but I think for now, let's get these fired up and head down to the warehouse where I've set up something to scan. All right, so we now have the scanners both downstairs as well as my laptop, and we're gonna be scanning my colleague's bike. Uh, the reason I'm gonna use this is to kind of show you guys that these scanners can do something that the original Einstar couldn't, which was scan black objects with ease. Uh, the original Einstar was obviously a near infrared scanner and as such struggled with dark and shiny objects. So with the new Einstars incorporating laser that overcomes this. All right, so what I'm gonna do to get started is I'm gonna grab my marker dice from the new Shining 3D Accessory Pro Pack. These are also available now. Uh, very cool, they come with a turntable, marker cards, individual magnetic marker um, dots, as well as a bunch of marker dice. So I'm gonna pop them a couple of the dice down see how many we need and uh, I have got a couple additional 3D printed ones if need be. Um, get those on the bike and then we can get to laser scanning with the Einstar 2. Alright so I've popped those in places where you know the geometry might not be critical for whatever you're needing. Let's say you're creating a new cover or a guard or something like that. Uh, obviously if you were going ahead and recreating a bracket to mount to these bolt holes we would go and we would move that away from there onto maybe that bolt there so that these were accessible for the scanner to see. Um, obviously because anything that these see is gonna be blocked by the scanner. So you've got to kind of pick where you want them carefully. Okay, so let's op optimize the global markers and now we can scan the point cloud. Right, let's see how this goes. Yeah, and there's our blue laser lines, which is cool. All right, so we do have some reflective bits here. It's doing a pretty, pretty good job so far. We do have some reflective bits, so. All right, so I've switched on its reflective mode. Let's see if that does assist with these chrome bits. Yeah, so immediately the lasers are definitely brighter. Yeah, and it's capturing it too. All right, so that is a huge, huge help for some of the more gloss black, shiny bits and pieces. Now, obviously, you know, a bike like this is a worst case scenario for a scanner because it's all really, really dark and really reflective for the most part, but this reflective mode's definitely helping a lot. So that has actually left us with a very competent looking scan where I can very easily read the Honda logo um, as well as pick up a lot of other details, uh, bolt locations, all that sort of thing. Um, I could very easily be able to read the bolt sizes from some of these. Um, so very, very promising indeed. I want to jump over to the rocket, see how it compares. Okay, so the one thing I immediately notice is this is definitely a bit heavier. And this front section of the housing here is actually what feels like aluminium, uh, whereas the Einstar 2 was plastic. So this, uh, yeah, it definitely feels a bit more weighty. So um, yeah, whether that's going to correlate to a better scanning experience, we're going to find out. All right, so immediately the interface is slightly different. We've, got, we've now got the option for feature alignment, but we're going to leave that for after I've removed the markers. So uh, let's do a global marker file first and pretty much follow exactly the same process we followed with the Einstar 2. All right, so global marker optimization and then we should be go to actually scan the bike itself, so. All right, 
exactly the same as last time. I'm gonna leave it on normal to start. Obviously this is 38 laser lines, so I'm expecting it to be a little bit quicker. Uh, let's see how we go. Right, so immediately is definitely acquiring data significantly quicker. All right, so same as last time, we've got those areas where we might need the reflective mode. So I'm just going to flick over to the reflective mode again. All right, so we do actually have one more trick up our sleeve. Um, so I might use that to try and get a little bit behind here or kind of in these areas here. The rocket has a changeable laser mode, so we can go from 38 cross laser lines to seven parallel lines. So I'm gonna switch that on now and just see if it gives us a little bit of an advantage in some of the sort of deeper crevices. So let's have a look. Yep, it's definitely reaching slightly further down in and amongst those coolant pipes. So it might not be something you use all the time, but uh, it's definitely a, a nice to have. So just as it's just the same with Einstar 2, I'm going to optimize the point cloud and mesh it and yeah, do no cleanup or any of that sort of thing and just see how they look side by side. All right, so I would say the level of detail is a little bit higher with the Einstar rocket. Uh, they're quite similar in a lot of ways, but that ability of the seven laser lines to get nice and deep in this sort of pocket here is something that's quite evident. So uh, yeah, it's it's one of those, you can't really go wrong with either of them as a hobbyist, but um, yeah, if you're kind of looking for that next step up, you know, for just a little bit more of an investment, the Einstein rocket would probably be the right move. Um, mm. Also, it does give you that ability to use marker-free laser scanning. So I'm gonna give that a shot now because that also might be enough of a reason for you to take the jump up to the rocket. All right, so I'm gonna remove all of our marker dice. Just double check, but I think that is all of them. I always seem to miss one, but anyway, I think we're all right. Okay, so now we're in feature alignment. This is gonna require much slower scanning. Um, and it is important to note that if we were scanning something with very little geometry, um, so like the door of a car or something like that, we might run into issues because it needs constant changing geometry to be able to stitch all the scans together. So like I said, we do have to move a lot slower and I can tell that because the data is taking significantly longer to go from yellow to blue. It's doing a really good job though. So I think um, we've seen what the actual scan data can look like from this. So I think it's time, let's see if we go up onto the fuel tank where we start to run into issues. All right, so it did lose tracking. It thought it regained it, so we've got a little bit of misalignment, but I did think that would be the case. Let's have a look. Yeah, so it did actually capture a good chunk of the tank before it started misaligning over here. So let's, um, let's do a point cloud optimization on that and see where we end up. It'll probably get rid of the second skin and uh, we'll have a look and we can see where we land. If you've got any questions or require more information about any of the scanners we've used here or any of the other Shining 3D scanners, please feel to drop us an email or jump on the website and you can submit a form there for an online demo and we can give you the full rundown of exactly how the scanners work and what scanner might best suit you.